Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rich Vitorinsky. I'm the moderator here at this Pol uh, Poland First to Fight program. I wanted to also say that it's a good omen. I see on many tables here a bottle of Saratoga water. Significance, obviously, Thaddeus Kosciuszko. Without him and the Battle of Saratoga, America wouldn't be here. So anyway, the goals of this event this uh, afternoon and for the next three days are pretty evident in your conference guide here. As a matter of fact, I've got the old one, the old version. <clears throat> Let me just give you a rundown. The conference program aims to broaden the World War II narrative by promoting and examining certain aspects of the war against Poland and crimes committed by Nazi Germany and Soviet Russia, generally unknown or ignored in the West. Although Poland was a loyal and active wartime ally, the country was betrayed and handed over Stalin through, Stalin through the Yalta Agreement. For decades afterwards, Poland remained behind the Iron Curtain, and the history of war crimes committed in occupied Poland remained unknown to the outside world. The conference will address the gaps and the persistent falsehoods that developed during the Cold War. The forum offers an opportunity for distinguished scholars to present their research on aspects of the war insufficiently examined or neglected in current scholarship. They will analyze the conse consequences of the brutal occupiers and the policies of war, policy of, of terror and lawlessness, the enslavement and exploitation of the general population in the service of Nazi military industrial complex, and the violence created by Soviet invasions. The conference will also focus on Poland's valuable contributions as an ally, such as the Kuszczuszko squadron and the Enigma machine, and the tragic lack of responses from allies to the Polish underground ongoing, underground's ongoing efforts to inform them of the genocidal war. The conference will also celebrate the resistance and determination of the Polish people during the war and their persistent post-war struggle for freedom against the Soviet-imposed communist regime. With the support of Polish American organizations, other emigrate communities, war veterans and their descendants, and scholars from Poland and other countries, we hope to promote product, productive exchanges to dispel, to dispel the existing misinformation and deliberate distortions about Poland as well as its history in academia, the media, and popular culture. As you can see, we have a wonderful exhibit on both sides here, and we encourage you to take a look when you have time, take some pictures, and we have some magnificent books over there for sale. Right now, I would like to introduce Professor Marek Kornat, who is the chair of the program committee. Uh, Mr. Kornat, or rather Professor Kornat, is from the Cardinal Stefan Wyszynski University, Warsaw, and the Institute of History of Polish Academy of Sciences in Warsaw. After him, Dr. Marek Bojajak, uh, the chair of the executive committee here, who is a Polish activist from Munich. Uh, he's an MD and he is an orthopedist. So first and foremost, let's have you greet Professor Marek Kornat. Professor. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, um, the Second World War was ended 74 years ago, but the battle for the memory on this war is still in progress, is actually in progress. This is a situation of special importance for us, for the Poles. Uh, Poland played a special role in the genesis of the Second World War. Polish now to German Chancellor in 1938 and 1939 was the reason of the invasion of Poland and it was the uh, first, first chapter of the war. Uh, I think that Poland occupies a special and significant role in the history of the uh, Second World War. Um, Poland did not want to become a junior partner of Germany. 
Poland, uh, Poland's decision, the decision of the Polish government was supported by all Polish nations in 1939. Poland was invited and occupied, and it was a territory of the exterminatory policy of the occupants. It was really a total war declared by the two totalitarian powers, I mean Germany of Hitler and Soviet Union of Stalin. Uh, we must not to forget that the Soviet Union uh, contributed highly in the events leading to the war. Pact Ribbentrop Molotov is a symbol, is a symbol of alliance, tactical alliance and cooperation of two totalitarian powers, and Poland was the first victim of this action. Um, we must say that our conference is a response of all falsifications. It should be a response of Polish uh, historiography, of Polish academic historians in their public discourse. It is true, as German poet and writer Johann Wolfgang Goethe said, that each generation writes history of his nation newly. Uh, each generation contributed, contributes to the uh, history. And I think, uh, let me say some words, uh, that uh, it will be a positive experience in Polish-American uh, historical relations and in presentation of Polish history here in Washington, D.C. I wish you good impression after our debates. In these debates, we will try to touch two kinds of problems, two kinds of topics. I mean the topics which are neglected in historiography and topics which are controversial. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Kornat. At this time, I'd like to invite Dr. Marek Wojciak to say a few words as well. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Marek Wojciak. I'm chair of the executive committee of the conference. I would like to give you some background information about this uh, conference. So, it's a grassroots initiative organized by a handful of people. We are private persons, not specialists in event management, so it was a huge task for us, um, resembling um, climbing uh, Mount Everest in winter, not, not, really, not really easy, but I think we succeeded. We had a lot of guests here. Tomorrow we'll have much more. And um, this conference was possible only thanks to the donations from uh, Poles, from private persons, from Polish Americans mainly, but also from some institutions. One of them, uh, was the Polish Slavic Federal Credit Union, the biggest financial institution in the United States. Um, the Veco Travel, it is a travel agency and in the Polish uh, Chambers of Commerce and Industry in New Delhi. We have also uh, great support from Polonia Institute and also from organizations like Polish American um, Strategic Initiative. It is a new organization dealing with education and also some political lobbying in, in Washington, D.C. What are the conference goals? We have the 80th anniversary of the uh, outbreak of the Second World War, and we want to pay tribute to our fathers, mothers, our grandfathers, grandmothers who suffered or who fought on various fronts of the war against Nazi Germany and Soviet Russia. Another goal of this conference is to create a platform for networking. We have here a lot of guests from different countries. We have prominent speakers from India, from Germany, from Poland, from Great Britain, from Spain, of course, from the United States. And this conference should serve as a kind of platform paving the way for establishing new scientific contacts, some collaboration also in the film industry. So we encourage you to talk to each other and to, to start various cooperations in the future. Um, 
one of the important goals of the conference is also to expose some bias in the historical narrative about uh, Poland, Polish experience during World War II. Uh, we feel that we are treated unfairly by the media, by the academia, and also by the politicians. Poland suffered horribly during the war. The country was attacked by Germany on September 1st, 1939, and seven days later by the Soviet Russia. The first goal of Nazi Germany was to annihilate the Polish intelligentsia. In the first two, three years of the war, the casualties on the Polish side among ethnic Poles were in proportion um, pro every 10 persons, nine were Polish, ethnic Polish citizens, and one a Jewish citizen. It changed after the Wannsee Conference in Berlin. The proportion was then uh, three to two, two Polish ethnic citizens and three ethnic Jewish citizens. The war cost the life of six million Polish citizens, amongst them three million Polish citizens of Jewish descent. We suffered huge material losses. A lot of people from the Polish elites uh, lost their life, and uh, after the Second World War, the country was occupied by Soviet Russia. Another 40 years of occupation followed. But today, the problem is that the history is distorted by the media, by academia, and also by politicians. Uh, you know the problem of uh, the so-called Polish dead camps uh, in reference to the uh, Nazi German camps established in occupied Poland, but also in many other countries, which are unjustly called frequently by the world media Polish camps. The problem is that this changes significantly the perception of the role which Poland played during the war. Uh, I was a member of a group which is called Polish Media Issue, Issues Group, and uh, we carried out a survey in 2015 in Great Britain with over 2,000 respondents, and we found out that uh, the young generations have no idea who set up Auschwitz and who administered the camp. 19% 19, 19 of the young generation answered that it is Poland this Poles were responsible for establishing Auschwitz and uh, managing the camp. So, repeating again and again this uh, historically false and offensive term, Polish camps, leads to some changes in the perception how Poland and Poles are perceived. And uh, this is the problem because Poles were the first victims of the Nazi and Soviet occupation. And uh, there are more and more cases that uh, Poles are perceived not as victims, but as perpetrators. I remember a case, my colleague visiting a college in California, asking a very simple question to, to the students. What do you think? Who are Nazis? And the answer was, of most of the, of the students, it is Poles. So it is absolutely unacceptable. Poles were victims of Nazi Germany and of Soviet Russia, were not Nazis. So for this reason, among others, we organized this conference to make it clear that Poland was the victim of World War II and not the perpetrator. I can show you some examples here from, um, from the media on the left side. Uh, it is from CBS News uh, during the celebration of the anniversary um, of uh, liberation of the Auschwitz camp uh, in the last year. Um, CBS called Auschwitz a Polish dead camp. On the right side, um, it was the uh, Telegraph called also um, Auschwitz a Polish camp. Another Example here is Fox News, also Polish camp, Jewish, uh, Jewish voice, Polish Auschwitz, Birkenau, dead camp. There are at least 300, 350 such cases in the mainstream media every year, and it has a significant, imp significant impact on, on the perception of Poles. Here's another example, uh, just several days ago, in Daily Mail, the title of the article, Poland's notorious Stalag Luft tree in World War II camp. Stalag was located in Germany, and uh, Poles were prisoners of war in this camp. There was also a movie about this camp, Grand Escape. So it has nothing to do with Poland, in fact. Here's another example, uh, also several days ago, Netflix, a company offering streaming services, uh, film productions, uh, started with a new documentary about uh, John Demianuk, who was a guard at the Treblinka death camp, and a map showing 
contemporary Poland with uh, Nazi German camps on the map suggesting that these camps belonged to Poland. Um, it's led to uh, protests in the Polish media, also in the Polish government. Uh, Polish Prime Minister Morawiecki uh, sent a letter to the management of Netflix and asked for a correction. So on the right side, we have the, the correct map. It is totally un not understandable why such a company like Netflix is not able to, uh, to use a correct map. We are using maps in our life when, when we are wandering, so without any map, we cannot reach our goal. So it is um, kind of subtle manipulation of public opinion, but it impacts also the perception of Poland. Here are correct maps. I visited the um, Holocaust Memorial and Museum in Washington several days ago and uh, made some photos of the maps and uh, you can see that the difference is, is uh, substantial. So on the left side you have uh, Nazi Germany, on the right side uh, Soviet Russia. There was no Poland. Poland was occupied so you cannot <coughs> define the camps in terms uh, of Polish camps. And last but not least, what is the goal of this conference? You know, perhaps uh, an old proverb from the Middle East. A fool throws a stone into a well and it requires a hundred wise men to get it out again. Or in Polish, one of the goals of, the, of this conference is to get out the stone from the well. Thank you very much. <laughs>